A Place for Butterflies, written by Melissa Stewart, illustrated by Higgins Bond. So how I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna read the main words first, um, and then I'm gonna go back to these text boxes because they're very um, full of information, but they can be a little bit distracting to the words along the top. Butterflies fill our world with beauty and grace, but sometimes people do things that make it hard for them to live and grow. If we work together to help these special insects, there will always be a place for butterflies. Like all living things, butterflies need to eat certain foods. Many adult butterflies feed on flower nectar. When people have gardens in their yards, butterflies can live and grow. Some butterflies feed on sugary tree sap. When people work to protect forests, butterflies can live and grow. Many caterpillars eat only one kind of plant. Some caterpillars depend on plants that grow on burned land. When people let some natural wildfires burn, butterflies can live and grow. Some caterpillars depend on plants that grow in wet places. When people protect swamps and marshes, butterflies can live and grow. Some caterpillars depend on plants that are poisonous to cattle and sheep. When farmers let these plants grow in fields where animals don't graze, butterflies can live and grow. Some caterpillars depend on plants that attack the trees people use to make paper. When people leave these plants alone, butterflies can live and grow. Butterflies need more than just food to survive. They also need to stay safe and healthy. Some butterflies are so beautiful that people like to catch them and keep them. When laws stop people from collecting these special insects, butterflies can live and grow. Some butterflies are harmed by chemicals used to kill other insects. When people stop using these chemicals or spray them very carefully, butterflies can live and grow. Some butterflies have trouble surviving when new plants invade the areas where they live. When people choose native plants for their yards, butterflies can live and grow. Butterflies have trouble surviving when their natural homes are destroyed. Many butterflies can only live in open fields. When people create new grassy areas, butterflies can live and grow. Some butterflies can only survive in sandy thickets near the ocean. When people work to restore these wild places, butterflies can live and grow. When too many butterflies die, other living things may also have trouble surviving. That is why it's so important to protect butterflies in the places they live. Butterflies have lived on Earth for over 140 million years. Some of these thing of the things people can do or some of the things people do can harm butterflies, but there are many ways you can help these special insects live far into the future. A butterfly's life. As butterflies grow, they go through four life stages. A female butterfly lays her eggs on plants. When an egg hatches, a caterpillar wriggles out. After a few weeks of nonstop eating, the caterpillar becomes a pupa. It is surrounded by a hard shell called a chrysalis. When the chrysalis splits open, a winged adult enters the world. Eastern tiger swallowtail. 
Have you ever seen an eastern tiger swallowtail fluttering around a wild flower garden or resting on an apple tree? These butterflies spend their days sipping sweet nectar. Their favorite flowers include lilacs, apple blossoms, and wild cherry blossoms. When people grow trees and other flowering plants in their yards, eastern tiger swallowtail butterflies have plenty of food. <clears throat> morning, morning cloak. Most butterflies feed on nectar, but morning cloaks sip on tree sap and juices from rotting fruit. When wooded areas are destroyed to make room for houses and other buildings, morning cloaks have trouble surviving. When people protect and preserve forests, morning cloaks have a place to live and food to eat. Carner Blue. We think of fires, tornadoes, and hurricanes as dangerous and destructive, but Carner Blue caterpillars depend on these natural disasters. The caterpillars eat only wild lupine, a plant that grows best in places where other plants have been burned away or knocked over. At the Albany Pine Bush Preserve in New York, people carefully set fires to create the perfect habitat for Carner Blues. Thanks to their hard work, the number of butterflies is growing. Hessel's Hair Streak. Hessel's Hair Streak caterpillars must eat the leaves of the Atlantic Cedar, a tree that grows in swamps. In the past, people drained the water out of these wetlands. The cedar trees died and the caterpillars starved. Now that Hessel's hair streaks are protected by law in seven states, people are preserving their wetland homes. Monarch. Female monarch butterflies always lay their eggs on milkweed plants. It is the only food monarch caterpillars can eat. But milkweed can give cattle and sheep a terrible stomach ache. Farmers don't want sick animals, so they often kill milkweed. But if they let milkweed grow in fields where animals aren't feeding, monarch butterflies will be able to lay their eggs on the plants. Thicket hair streak. Thicket hair streak caterpillars must eat dwarf mistletoe, a plant that jams root-like snickers into or sinkers into trees and steals food and water. Dwarf mistletoe often attacks the large evergreen trees that grow in western forests. For many years, forest rangers killed mistletoe, mistletoe because it was harming the trees used to make paper and other wood products. But now they are letting it grow so that it can provide food and shelter for the thicket hair streak caterpillars and other forest creatures. Mitchell Seder. Because Mitchell Seder are so beautiful, many people want to add them to their butterfly collections. In 1992, the little red-winged insects were added to the endangered species list. Now it is against the law to catch and keep them. In Michigan, people are working hard to save the Mitchells, um, satyrs, and the land where they live. Um, Suchus swallowtail. In South Florida, giant clouds of mosquitoes fill the skies during the hot, humid summer. When workers began spraying chemicals to kill the mosquitoes, the number of Suchus swallowtails fell too. In 1991, the spraying stopped in the areas where the butterflies live. The such as sw swallowtail is still in trouble, but scientists hope it will survive. Oregon silver spot. Scotch, brooms, it, Scotch broom is a plant that grows naturally in Great Britain. Because it has pretty yellow flowers and grows easily, people in the Pacific Northwest planted it in their yards. Over time, scotch broom crowded out the plants Oregon silver spot feed on, and the butterflies had trouble surviving. Recently, zoos in Oregon and Washington began a program to replace scotch broom with native plants, and Oregon silver spots are making a comeback. Harris's checker spot. Not long ago, small family farms covered much of New England, but now people are building houses and shopping malls on the land. In Worcester, Massachusetts, the local electric company created, wanted to create new places for the Harris checker spots to live. Workers often saw butterflies um, flitting along the grassy paths under the power lines. They asked scientists when they could mow the grass without harming butterfly eggs or caterpillars. Now butterflies can spend their whole lives in these grassy places. Palos Verdes Blue. In the 1980s, a town in California built a baseball field where the last known group of Palos Verdes blue butterflies lived. Scientists thought the little insects had disappeared forever, but in 1994, they were spotted on a nearby Navy base. Many caring people helped plant sunflowers for the adults and deer weed for the caterpillars. Now the number of Palos Verdes blue butterflies is growing. 
Plants need butterflies. As a butterfly feeds on flower nectar, it becomes dusted with pollen. When the insect flies to another flower, the pollen goes along for the ride. At the next stop, some pollen falls off the butterfly's body and lands on the flower. Then the plant can use material in the pollen to make seeds, which will grow into new plants. Butterflies and moths pollinate more plants than any other insect except bees. Without butterflies, some flowering plants might disappear from earth forever. Butterflies are an import, or sorry, other animals need butterflies too. Butterflies are an important part of the food chain. Caterpillars rarely gobble up enough leaves to kill a plant. As they eat, their droppings fall to the ground and add nutrients to the soil. Both caterpillars and chrysalids are a good source of food for other insects, as well as mice, possums, skunks, birds, and toads. Adult butterflies are often eaten by spiders and dragonflies and praying mantids. Without butterflies, many other creatures would go hungry. Starting a butterfly garden. If every neighborhood had one or two butterfly gardens, many more butterflies would have everything they need to survive. There are plenty of great books that can help you begin a butterfly garden. To get started, you'll need a water supply, a variety of plants that bloom throughout the spring, summer, and early autumn. Ask the workers at a local garden center which plants the butterflies in your area like best. Helping butterflies. Do not catch and keep butterflies. Do not spray chemicals that could harm butterflies. Join a group of people that is keeping track of butterflies in your area. Write an article about butterflies for your school newspaper or start a butterfly garden in your yard or neighborhood.